Kyle Mohan Racing. We're hanging out in the shop. We're always trying to talk rotary, introduce new parts, and today we're going to do a KMR Tech Talk, or maybe it's a little bit of a, a just product discussion, full peripheral port housings discussion, and a little bit of just my opinion on uh, what's available, um, what I like to see, what's been around in the past. Hey, this is a full peripheral port KMR Tech Talk. All right, so we're going to start off with just the basics. Hey, we've got some peripheral port housings here. I'm going to put this one on the ground. We're going to start off with this one. Peripheral porting or peripheral ports in a traditional sense are the idea of taking and boring right through this water jacket and introducing the air, your induction air, uh, in mass volume. It's also changing rotary uh, overlap. Uh, it's changing uh, the duration. So just like in a racing V8 or piston situation, introducing peripheral porting, which generally then removes your side ports, uh, it would be the equivalent to a very aggressive cam, a uh, drag race or high-end road race cam timing, port timing would be the functionality. So your peripheral port motors generally operate at high RPMs, meaning your shift point power peak is going to be somewhere up in the 9500 9, range and beyond, potentially even up to 11 plus, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Um, right here, I have what I would consider probably one of the most high-end or most modernized upper end version of what peripheral porting and rotary machine work has to offer. This was done by Chipper Sue. Um, if anybody else is doing this type of work out there, hey, mention it in the comments. Just happens to be what I have at the shop right now, and it's amazing. He's actually, uh, well, first of all, original peripheral port housings were done by the factory, and they were cast. So the factory eliminated this water jacket. And then as we got into racers individuals like myself or back in the 70s even wanting to manufacture this they would just bore a hole and press in a sleeve straight shot and then epoxy fill this water jacket now there's nothing wrong with that but jumping forward with modern machinery cnc's and the idea that the factory had this area solid I think this is really cool because uh, Chips Motorsports is able to mill out that water jacket area, press in solid aluminum sleeves, and then insert the actual peripheral port sleeve uh, where they want. And it would be in my preferred method, uh, similar to other people in the industry. Racing Beat also does this method. Um, their, their housings are fantastic, and I'm sure other people do as well. But essentially, you're not just pressing the sleeve in. It's actually threaded in, and instead of puncturing all the way through, it's landing on a machined surface behind the face. So it's actually sealing internally behind these uh, solid-filled plugs. I think this is probably the closest equivalent in, uh, in what's being done to the water passage to what the factory originally offered with their solid cast housings. Uh, another neat thing about modern CNC technology is uh, they're able to CNC cut the sleeves, change your port shape, and change your port timing. So this particular peripheral port We've brought the port timing up, gone with a Wigan-style clamp, and are using a, a D-style shape, all in the effort to optimize our port timing, port flow, and RPM range that this particular motor is going to be functioning in. And uh, I felt like I had to do this tech talk because this part's going in a motor, so I won't have this ability soon, so just wanted to... Say thank you to the customer who's been patient. Thank you to Chips. 
And uh, this would be what I would consider probably your modern upper end to what peripheral porting has to offer. It's also nice, uh, some beautiful water jacket mods. I can cover this in another video, but this is a great way to help reduce uh, the lack of heat transfer around your spark plug area, which can lead to shrinkage and cracking. So if you're building high horsepower builds, high sustained heat builds, or anything you want to last a long time, this can be a great option. It can also be done by hand, but that looks beautiful. Um, so there you kind of have it. Common fail points on peripheral ports if they're uh, epoxy filled is if this area doesn't get epoxied properly or if the sleeve doesn't get pressed or set properly. Um, you can have leakage internally at the face in here. I always recommend using Hylamar, you know, seal up your, your build. Uh, don't leave it to chance. Um, I would still Hylamar all this up even though it's absolutely gorgeous and very solid. And, uh, you know, I think with this type of technique where you're screwing it in to a solid face that's been machined, it's not just a simple press, and you've eliminated the water jacket is probably one of the safest and longest lasting peripheral port methods you could use currently. Um, you know, so if you're looking to have a long lasting build and you don't have access to the discontinued factory peripheral port housings, this, this is a great way to go. Now, comparatively speaking, you know, peripheral porting has been around forever. Tons of different ways to do it. I happen to have these two different ways right now. The preference being, uh, in my opinion, the screw-in method. It's going to last longer. But I always like to follow up with, really, there's nothing wrong with the traditional press-in method. Ideally, this sleeve was chilled down, uh, machined to a specific tolerance, and pressed in just to another uh, machined face, ideally. Um, in this particular case, I would call this the old school or the drag race method, and I'm not hating on anybody. I know it works. Everybody comment below and you know you can tell me what you guys think, but to me this is less ideal because now you're going to have to, th this is a pressed in sleeve, um, easy to do. It's going to be a, a, a backfill here with epoxy. They've done a great job grinding it out. You can see that the fitment's very nice. So again, I'm, you know, this is nicely done. This is just probably what I would consider the older method or just uh, prior to having the ability to do screw in or if you don't have the ability to screw it in, press in method. Now, I would rather see a pressed in sleeve not come all the way to the face of the uh, running surface. This is going to have to be ported down because you don't want the chance of this aluminum expanding under heat more than the, uh, the chrome plated surface does and that could snag your apex seal. So basically this whole uh, pressed in sleeve has to be machined or ported down and blended in. Uh, very common in peripheral ports. Again, I see this a lot in drag racing, but for road racing or street or longevity, I think this would be less ideal. Um, and I, I guess in, in some ways too, you know, if we compared the opening width to the other housing, I think you'd notice that uh, the exhaust port and the intake port maintain a similar width I'm sorry this isn't better video, I could talk about this later, but basically you don't want to let the apex seal have too much droop into a port. So extending your port up and down is always safer than widening your port, whether it be a peripheral or exhaust or intake or anything like that. Um, and in this case you can see that you're not really leaving a lot of uh, room for this apex seal to be supported at its widest point. So then I would if I had to do this porting, if I had to clean this up, then I would probably go with a round port so you don't have a lot of area where that apex seal would be suspended. So, um, you know, KMR, peripheral, tech talk, old school peripheral port, works great, bolt-on flange, pressed in. I'd rather see it pressed uh, basically to an interface here versus all the way through, but different shops do it different ways. And then you have very uh, upper end modern, uh, similar to what you know the factory was doing, only this would be a, uh, an aftermarket version of solidifying your water jacket and then screwing this uh, sleeve in. 
very solid, especially in boosted applications. And always remember, you know, peripheral porting is a race port. You know, this isn't going to be an extremely streetable setup. You're, you're making power from four or 5,000 RPM up. Um, if you're idling these motors, generally their idle is going to be above 1,500, probably 2,200 RPM plus. Very heavy on the BRAP, uh, heavy on the fuel consumption. They've got a lot of overlap. I think it's all a matter of understanding uh, the porting and, and what we're trying to do with rotaries. That's how we get the best out of them. I'm planning on doing a peripheral port myself sometime soon. So I love street ports. I love bridge ports. I love semi-peripherals. I love peripherals. It's all about loving the rotary, understanding it, and having fun. I hope everybody has enjoyed this little bit of information just about peripheral ports, peripheral porting, and... Uh, Kind of a comparison to what I would consider uh, one of the best uh, peripheral port housings and uh, machine work on the market. Um, and comparing it to, you know, like I said, this is nothing bad. This would just be a very older traditional uh, method. Enjoy. Happy brapping. Get those motors out there. Get them running. Feel free to ask questions, follow KMR. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. We're trying to build a channel here. Kyle Mohan Racing.